Bless your son. Yeah. And basically, yeah, you, you need a microscope and uh, patience. <laughs> and the way we got it before was through our water system, before we had the chlorine? Actually, no, the way we would have gotten it before barefoot. is walking barefoot, barefoot. Uh, okay. through the environment. And that's what was such, that's what's such a disaster uh, in, in, in developing countries, yeah. is they can't control their dose. Mm -hmm. They're walking barefoot, and they're getting infected with hundreds or thousands of these. And so yes. they're just sitting there like I saw a video where they were bringing, they would take a pill, they'd go home, they'd poop them on, they'd bring buckets full of worms to, to, back to the, the place so they could dispose of them. Right. Yeah. Uh, Costa Rica? Uh, it's Africa. Africa. Yeah. And there's lots of different worms. And mind you, not all worms are good for you. Like, for instance, if you have a uh, roundworm, that actually increases your immune responses. Makes your allergies worse, or autoimmune worse. But human hookworm and human uh, withworm are the two species that apparently co-evolved with us for long enough that they're all, they're sort of they're more along the lines of friends rather than an enemy, assuming the friends are in the right ratio to your to your body's cell count. And they call it the old friends hypothesis is what it's called. It used to be called the hygiene hypothesis that like we were too clean and that's why we we're having trouble. It's not necessarily the cleanliness, it's, it's who you're keeping out, mm. you know, and the old friends are the ones you don't want to keep out. Interesting. Yeah, it's super interesting. And it took so long to build a connection with us, like, to live with us, and then we're just like, we don't want you no more. Like, yeah. I've took millions of years to be your friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be your friend. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I think what's even more interesting is that it, it just shows that too much of a good thing is a bad yeah. thing, and mm -hmm. not enough of, of a good thing is a bad thing. It's more about the balance, balance than it is balance. the absolute balance. identity of something. You know, it's possible to have too much of anything. Same with water. Is Drink too much water, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Not enough water, you're in any trouble. Any research into um, using probiotics as a replacement for antibiotics instead of like, okay, I've had to take some and now I'll replace it? Is there any research or any hypothesis that you would be able to say, oh, I have this problem, take this bacteria? I think of probiotics as a little bit more preventative than curative. Okay. Like if, if you're really, really coated with good bacteria, the chances of you getting salmonella are really small because the real estate in your intestines is pretty much already used up by the good bacteria. There's not a lot of places to colonize. Um, there are there is a therapy, an antibiotic therapy that's sort of interesting in Russia where they introduce viruses instead of antibiotics because it, it turns out that certain viruses are just kill the heck out of certain kinds of bacteria. Right. And they started producing, they started doing this like I think it was in the 19, like 30s, 40s, 50s, something like that. And then antibiotics came on the scene and <clears throat> were much more popular. But now that we have all this antibiotic resistance, uh, people are looking more into the, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a, it's a therapy where it's, it's yeah, bacterial every phages. bacteria has a, a phage that'll yeah, yeah. attack it, right? Yeah. So to pick the right and one. the Russians are, are sort of the, the leaders in that. Interestingly, the Russians are also the, the researchers that do the cave fear. Um, and the sauerkraut. And the sauerkraut, yeah. The, there's, a, there's a good... Well, when you think about just, like, India, China, and Russia are all on the same continent, <laughs> you know, like, the, the chances of coming up with cool stuff is really high, because, like, huge numbers of people have been living there for huge numbers of years. Um, so it's pretty cool, some of the folk remedies and medicines and philosophies that have developed on, on, those, those, that, on that continent. So that's the story of the hookworm, and, uh, you, like, it'd be virtually impossible for you to get hookworm from me, because this stuff, it has to culture in soil for seven days before it becomes infectious. And as, assuming I'm, I'm defecating into chlorinated water, they're all dead. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the purpose of chlorinated water. So, that's how that, that's how that goes. But, um, but one of the reasons it's not FDA approved in the United States is because there's enough peer reviewed research to show that it, it's that potently beneficial and pharmaceutical companies have captured some of the FDA, in my opinion. 
and and so and so yeah like what's happening is pharmaceutical companies right now are grinding up hookworms trying to figure out what it is that they're doing and they're going to try to put it in a pill and sell it for a billion dollars <laughs> but it's yeah. working as an ecosystem component not as they'll never achieve yeah. It'd be like trying to put a robot on a bicycle and say, you know, ride the bicycle, even though the bicycle is a dynamic equilibrium machine. You know, it has to be a darn good robot. Kind of you know, what, the, what these hookworms are doing is they're literally riding, they're not riding a bicycle, they're riding a horse. And you're the horse. And they're, you know, they're skillful at it. So, it's really cool stuff. But anyway, that's something that I encountered during my, my things is, is the, the probiotic stuff. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's take a little break and, and make some kombucha. <laughs> <laughs>